So we're gonna do parts of the male reproductive. We can do a quick review of the, um, the urinary system also. All right, so I'm just gonna show you here. There's our kidney, all right? And if you follow the tan tube down, you'll see that that's the ureter and that's gonna come up and it's gonna enter the bladder. There's the part of the ureter that's gonna enter the bladder. Okay, so there's the, the male bladder. We have to open it up mm -hmm. so we can see the other parts. So here's the bladder. Uh, the wall of the bladder is called the detrusor muscle. Mm -hmm. The mucosal lining is folded, has rugae. Um, here is where the urethra begins and it's gonna pass through the prostate. That's the prostatic urethra. It's gonna pass through the floor of the pelvis, that's the urogenital diaphragm. So that's the membranous urethra. And then it's gonna pass through the penis. That's the spongy urethra. And there's the external urethral orifice. So those are parts of the urinary system, but parts of the urinary system are shared with the reproductive system. Okay, so the spongy urethra, the membranous urethra, and the prostatic urethra are also shared with the male reproductive system, okay? And here you see a little duct joining into the urethra, and that's where the reproductive system meets the urinary system. That's known as the ejaculatory duct. So we'll come back to that. All right, so male reproductive parts. So you have the main part, the gonad, that's known as the testis and there's two of them. The model doesn't really show two of them, but there are two, right and left, okay? Now the epididymis is connected to, I'm sorry, the testis is connected to the epididymis, all right? This is where spermatozoa will be stored. That's connected to this tan tube. This is the ductus deferens or vas deferens. And here you see it traveling up over the bladder, coming around the back, where it's going to meet up ultimately with the urethra. Mm -hmm. Other structures, external genitalia. You have the scrotum or scrotal sac. So that skin and muscle and connective tissues that surround and protect the testes. Mm -hmm. The penis, okay? It has components to it. This is known as the glands. That's the head of the penis. This is the body, okay? And then the rest of it continues internally in to the pelvic area. So let's open this up again, and you can see it continues internally. This becomes the crust or the root of the, the penis. Right. Now, with this open, you can see that the glands is covered with a layer of skin here, all right? So the head is surrounded by a layer of skin. That's known as the prepuce, the prepuce or the foreskin. Here, it's removed. So here you see the glands with the prepuce removed. So this is circumcised. We cut it, remove the prepuce, you can see the head. Here, they have it in place. So there's the foreskin covering the head. Okay. Inside the penis, since we have it open, there's erectile tissue, all right? There's the red and there's the purple. So there are two purple components, two corpora cavernosa and one corpus spongiosum. And you see the urethra runs through the corpus spongiosum. This is erectile tissue, meaning it can fill and enlarge and stiffen with blood. So blood enters, fills the tissue, the penis enlarges and stiffens, that's erection. Okay. Glands, there's three accessory glands. The prostate, the seminal, those are the main ones. And then we have to open this to see the third one. The bulbo urethral. 
Okay, the bulbal urethra is the smallest. It's embedded in the wall, the floor of the pelvis, the urogenital diaphragm. It secretes an alkaline mucus that just kind of lubricates the urethra. Okay. Prostate adds fluid to the spermatozoa. Seminal gland adds fluid to the spermatozoa. So let's trace the flow. Okay. So in the testis, spermatozoa are made. They're then stored in the epididymis. When you're gonna ejaculate, release them, they travel up through the ductus deferens. When they get to the backside here, the seminal gland is gonna produce seminal fluid and mix it with the spermatozoa. Okay. So that brings us to this point here. So they, they're mixing, and now the ejaculatory duct carries that mixture to the urethra. The prostate will add fluid, prostatic fluid, to the mix, and the bubble urethra will add to the mix. So we have seminal gland and prostate gland, adding, and bubble urethra, adding. At this point now, the mixture, semen, ejaculate, will make its way out of the box. Okay, so accessory glands add chemicals to the spermatozoa to support their health, their nutrition, their function, to neutralize acids and <coughs> destroy bacteria that might be in the vaginal canal when the spermatozoa enter. Other things that we see. Okay. Supplying the testis, an artery, testicular artery. Draining blood from the testis, veins called the pampiniform plexus. Okay. These arteries, veins, a nerve, a lymphatic vessel, the ductus deferens, all of these together are going to be encased in muscle tissue. Okay, we don't see the muscle tissue here, but the muscle tissue that surrounds and wraps around this is called the spermatic cord. This back, the spermatic cord has been removed. Okay? The spermatic cord is made from a muscle called the cremaster muscle. Okay, can we see the cremaster muscle? Yes. If we open this up and now look at a cross-sectional view of the testis, you see a pink layer of muscle tissue here that's the cream master. It's a muscle that surrounds the testis and creates what we call the spermatic cord. Okay, we have another model that we can look at uh, for that. But here we see the testis in its kind of home, meaning it lives in a cavity. You can see the little cavity here, all right? It's a fluid-filled cavity. Very similar to what we talk about here in the peritoneum and other cavities, where there's a membrane that covers the wall and then folds back onto the organ, covering the organ, and in between is the fluid-filled membrane. Same here. There is a membrane, it's called the tunica vaginalis, represented here by the white line, that adheres itself to the cremaster, that's the wall, and then folds onto the testis and epididymis, and creating a little cavity scrotal cavity filled with fluid. Okay. Outside of the cremaster, looks like some yellow fatty tissue. And outside of that, these little red dots, the dartos muscle, very thin muscle, that wrinkles the skin, the scrotal skin of the scrotal sac. So again, layers, skin, dartos, some adipose and connective tissue, Cream master, little white lines, tunica vaginalis, creating the scrotal cavity, and then work to the testis. Now, for our purposes, we're gonna take this testis, cut open testis, and we're gonna break it into three areas. The main area, which I'm outlining with the stick, we're gonna call that the seminiferous tubules. This little central area is the reet testis, and all of this around the outer edge, that's the epididymis. 
So we have three sections, seminiferous tubules, reach testis, epididymis. Spermatozoa made here, moved to the reach, stored in the epididymis, and then make their journey from the epididymis, ductus deferens, glandular secretions, ejaculation.